All right, hello everyone and welcome to Ozabot 101. Uh, my name is Melissa Tui and uh, happy early Halloween to everybody. It looks like I'm joined by uh, a pirate here, I'm assuming. <laughs> um, my colleague Christian is here as well and we will go ahead and jump right in. Um, for today's webinar, our agenda will include um, some housekeeping items, then we'll give you a introduction to Ozabot and talk about the two ways to code where Christian will be giving um, us a demo. Then I'll talk about our remote friendly lessons, which we are now calling our video lessons, and we'll jump into Q&A and have a wrap up. So to go over some of our housekeeping items, um, as an attendee, you, you are on mute and your camera is off. Um, you can use the Q&A feature to ask any questions. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end where we will visit revisit any of those questions in the Q&A feature. Uh, um, you can also type any questions in the chat. We have Crystal who's on our team in uh, monitoring the chat to answer any questions. Um, you can also upvote and uh, comment on one of those questions with your own insights in the Q&A. Um, if you are using the chat, please make sure to select everyone. Um, I believe it defaults to panelists and, and uh, host. Um, to start a dialogue. We'd love to know who you are, what you teach, and what brings you here today, um, if you'd like to share that in the chat. Um, these slides and the recording will be available. If you opt in for updates on ozabot.com, you will get an email with this uh, information. Um, you can also always find our webinar recordings and materials on YouTube and on our webinar page. So we'll go ahead and get started with our poll questions. We'd love to know how familiar everybody is with Ozobot. And I'll give everyone about 30 seconds to fill this up. All right, and it looks like uh, everybody, or not everyone, but most people in the audience um, own or use Ozobots, and well, one person um, knows people that use them in their classrooms. So welcome. Um, hopefully, we have some really uh, great information for you tonight so that you can get started. And for those of you that um, are already familiar with Ozobot, you'll learn um, about our new offerings as well. And we'd love to know what grade everybody teaches. I'll give about 30 seconds to fill out that poll question. All right, it looks like we have K through high school. So welcome everyone. And last but not least, we'd love to know what subjects you're most interested in or teaching um, with those bots. About 10 more seconds. Actually, it looks like everyone answered. Thank you. Um, so technology and engineering, wonderful. You came to the right place. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, so to give a little back background and context, um, a lot of us are asked to teach computer science, but we may not necessarily know the why. So the reason why we wanted to, we wanted to frame today's webinar um, with the why behind why students need to learn computer science and why Ozobot is providing the platform for students and teachers um, to engage in computer science. We know that states are mandating computer science education through the adoption of standards, but we also know that teachers are not prepared to teach, um, teach the content. Um, I believe there's a very small number of teachers that either are qualified or have background in computer science um, uh, training. Um, we also know that low socioeconomic um, status students um, have less access than their high SES uh, partners, and that impacts um, the instruction and the equity that faces um, students today. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Christian to talk about Osabot. All right. Um, dialing in here, 
Uh, some of you guys may recognize me as the artist formerly known as Prince. Um, if you could see the whole full body, you probably get a better idea of that, Melissa. But um, <clears throat> yeah, as, as Melissa was saying, I'm going to be taking you guys through the sort of ins and outs of Ozobot. Um, with a lot of you guys already having experience with this, I think we can uh, go through some of it a little bit quicker, but I do tend to speak in rants, so uh, please feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, you know, just as I, I think the the main focus here, you know, with this webinar and, and a lot of what we've been focusing at Ozobot are focusing on at Ozobot um, is is really providing something with a, a lot of versatility, right? Something that's going to be able to affect a lot of different students with a low investment, but also um, not only infect them with computer science and, and STEM subjects, but also any different uh, subject, any grade, anywhere. So um, it is a one-stop solution for all students, you know, trusting over 30,000 different schools, K through 12. Um, I believe that's closer to 35,000 now, but, um, you know, as far as accuracy goes, we'll keep it at 30. Um, with that, having the, the physical presence of the robot in front of them, and, and, and those of you who've seen it in action already, uh, probably identify the, the amount of engagement that having that physical presence of the bot in front of the students, watching it react with stimuli, using the different sensors, um, you know, it, it's tremendous, right? And, and that's why 95% of our users do report that increased engagement, um, especially, you know, being in the hybrid program with students at home, uh, definitely something that's going to keep the students engaged and, and help them learn, um, you know, through through the lessons as as we go along. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, a, a lot of interdisciplinary learning as well. Uh, Seventy four percent of the teachers are using this to teach the, the common core subjects, and so it's not just the the STEM and, and the engineering. Although I know a lot of you guys are interested in that. Um, you know, this is something that can can again reach a lot of different students in different subjects. Uh, different areas and it really fit a, a lot of different areas of, of your school. Um, and of course, we got a bunch of awards down there. As, as, as much as I love to brag about Ozobot, it's always good for others to, to do it for us. Um, and so essentially how it works, you know, we, we do have our one inch robots, which are desk friendly and Bluetooth enabled. Uh, you're not going to have to take a bunch of class time to do elaborate setups, move desks around. Um, we definitely understand the importance of uh, time management in a classroom. Um, and so if we were having you guys set up with, with everything 15 minutes beforehand, you know, maybe 20 minutes of instruction and then 15 minutes of putting everything away, um, that's just not ideal. And so, you know, by having this desk friendly uh, unit, as well as, you know, the, the easy ways to connect through the Bluetooth uh, saves a ton of class time um, and you guys can get right into the instruction. Uh, we've really based everything that we've done at Ozobot uh, so far on, on our two ways to code within the EDU space. Uh, that first way is going to be with our color codes and, and be completely off screen. Again, contributing to that versatility where you can actually learn how to code without having a computer, without having an iPad, anything like that, uh, just using markers and paper. Um, and then, you know, as they start to become familiarized with that, they can work their way into our Ozoblockly, which is a block coding platform um, that, that we've developed. And, and in all honesty, it is similar to other block coding platforms, but there's certainly a couple of key attributes that I think separate us from everybody else. Um, and so we'll get into those as we go on. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, we, we do have our lesson library um, you know, with over 500 different standardized aligned lessons. Um, covering everything from math, science, ELA, um, all over the board on that. So really, a, a, again, a versatile aspect to, to add and, and bring into the classroom where you can um, sort of plug and play and don't have to develop your, your own curriculum completely. Um, and so now we'll get into the two ways to code, right? And so I'm actually going to switch cameras. You guys can see that okay? Perfect. And so, um, although my extended frillies get in the way too much, um, we do have that, you know, star of the show, the Evo, as much as I'd love to believe it was me. Um, all different sorts of light sensors, uh, proximity sensors, and, and reading sensors on the bottom. Um, the bottom is going to, again, you know, follow the line and 
read the different uh, codes, coordination set up by the markers. Um, again, I know a lot of you guys have seen this, but I think this is a pretty cool exercise because this does use utilize some of the uh, more advanced techniques in, in regards to the, the color codes, um, because this does involve line jumping and, and some real uh, conceptual thinking, uh, utilizing some, some kinesiology with um, avoiding certain stimuli while you're out there. And so um, <clears throat> with this particular exercise, um, students are required to score a goal with Evo while also uh, passing up all of the defenders um, and ultimately um, finishing all of that within 30 seconds. So um, just set the Evo here. Let it go to work. And so again, you'll see the, the advanced concepts that we've added in regards to um, being able to jump the lines and then also still read the codes, continue to follow that black line until it's instructed to do something else. Tripping up some defenders on that side, cutting towards the middle. Of course, I'm working on my uh, broadcasting degree. So. Um, <laughs> And there we go. We shoot, we score. So um, again, you know, some pretty advanced, uh, you know, line jumping and, and stuff like that. But you can definitely see how those building blocks for coding are there. Um, those those cause and effect skills, those debugging skills, and, and um, again, those those base building blocks that the students are going to use and, and learn now to to build their skills upon in the future. Um, does anybody have any questions on that or anything that they wanted to uh, ask or bring up? Perfect. Okay. And so now we'll work into the Ozo Blockly. Let's see. And so I'll share my screen with you guys here. All right. And so this is my, uh, <clears throat> my classroom platform here, our Ozobot classroom platform. Um, this is going to be where you come to do anything Ozobot. Um, yeah, I do coach wrestling at West Torrance. So if you do see West Torrance anywhere, um, I didn't, you know, steal somebody's login information or anything like that. Um, and that would be why. Um, really good resources in here in regards to training for the two, bot, uh, two uh, ways to code um, with our, our bot camp here. Um, definitely recommend that, especially if you're new to Ozobot. And then uh, recommend getting some time on my calendar and going through one-on-one uh, -on -one demo, just kind of fine tune everything. Uh, make sure everybody feels really comfortable and confident using this in the classroom. Uh, you can also access our lesson library through here. Our, uh, this is where you can access Blockly. We also have our simulator here. Um, a little bit limited, but definitely a valuable resource. Um, coming very, very soon, we will have our Python script. Uh, and so at that point, uh, we truly will be sort of a, a three-headed monster, so to speak, fitting the Halloween theme. Uh, Three-headed monster to, to grow from the uh, color codes, graduate to the block coding, and then eventually straight into um, script coding where students will be able to essentially translate their block code into a Python code uh, and then be able to edit that Python uh, script within our Python editor, uh, tell the robot what to do with that Python script. And after that, I mean, they're probably ready to code their, their, the new Instagram or, or design their own website. So um, definitely something that we're really excited about because it's, it's going to really complete the, the overall process and, and get a, a lot more <clears throat> sorry a lot, a lot more advanced concepts uh, to, to the students in, in regards to computer science. So um, and so we'll work into Blockly here. Um, as I mentioned before, this is our device agnostic uh, block coding platform. Um, similar, I'm sure it's uh, the ones you've seen, right? We do have the drag and drop feature. You just drag here, uh, drop, and then the uh, robot will execute the actions within this here uh, platform. And so um, some of those key features that I think really separate us from everybody else is going to be number one, how easy it is to connect. Um, you know, basically I, I connect within two clicks here. Um, and I'm good to go. All I have to do now is click run program and the Evo is going to do the actions within the platform. Um, we also have a share, the ability to create a share code here, which is really cool because I can, we can actually have the uh, students send this to like 
their friends and, and their friends can say, hey, what if we move this around over here? What if we change this? Um, you know, really, really a way for them to provide sort of a, a collaborating factor, uh, a way to work together, even when they're at home. Um, and, and just something that's, that's sort of a cool aspect that we were able to add here. Um, and then one other cool thing is this JavaScript preview. Um, again, we, you know, we're, we're definitely working our way into that script coding. And so um, this is a really nice resource to have as well for those more advanced students who are, are kind of wanting to see what that uh, script language looks like. Uh, and then finally, and, and what I believe truly to be the, the biggest um, advantage by, by having this program are these discrete skill levels here. Uh, we do start out with a pre-reader, which is numbers up to 10 and symbols. Uh, going up to the beginner, which is a little bit more my speed, if I'm being honest, uh, all the way up to this master level where uh, I'd probably have to retake a couple of math classes to, to completely break down. Um, in fact, lists and arrays are, are concepts typically associated with advanced level high school computer science classes, as well as advanced or intro to computer science level classes in college. So um, I say that just to, to really reiterate that there's no level or there's no limit to how far the students can take it within this program. Um, and, you know, while you might be a level five and I might be a level two, uh, we're all in the same program doing the same things with the same robots. And so I don't really feel like I'm being left behind. You don't feel like you're being held back by any means. And everybody's able to go at their own pace and, and take on the challenges that they see fit. Um, and again, you know, I, I think it's, it's a huge advantage to be able to offer a differentiated learning model like this, uh, especially in a subject where there is a lot of there's a pretty wide spectrum of understanding. And so, um, you know, with, with this differentiated learning model, the students are really gonna be able to take advantage of this at their own pace. Um, does anybody have any questions on the Ozo Blockly at all? Sorry, I'm kind of ignoring the chat. Uh, no questions in the chat and no questions in the Q&A yet. Perfect, all right. Doing spectacularly over here. <laughs> no, really, really smart attendees, I'd say. Um, and so last thing, wanted to cover is going to be these lessons here. Um, <clears throat> definitely a, a really valuable resource. Uh, again, like I was saying before, where you don't really have to develop your own curriculum. You can uh, go through here and uh, search for certain things that you're looking for, um, or you can filter by subject, by grade level, uh, video, if it has a video lessons attached, uh, the robot you have, uh, the coding methods utilized, who created it, as well as the duration. Um, one really cool thing about our lessons is that while about 40% of the lessons have been developed by our internal educator team, the other 60% have been developed by uh, educators using Ozobot in the field. Uh, they give a really good idea, they develop a lesson, and they submit that to our internal educator team uh, where it is going, it's reviewed and then ultimately put within our, uh, our lesson library. And the reason I really like that is because it's sort of like for educators by educators and, and obviously has that real world application going in. Um, and, and as you guys probably know, educators speak a pretty similar language. So um, the formatting comes easy and it's, and it's very well built. So um, going into these a little bit deeper, um, take a look at one really quick. One thing I think that our internal educator team does really well at Ozobot is developing not necessarily lessons that have students doing engineering activities as much as they get, or these are activities that get students thinking like engineers, um, thinking like they're in a STEM career. And so by getting in that mindset and being able to utilize some of those academic standards that, that come with these lessons, um, it, it's a tremendous advantage for, for the students and, and ultimately um, their ability to, to learn and, and approach these problems accordingly. Um, and so we do have a preview here. Uh, we have these great bite-sized uh, walkthrough uh, videos for the lesson, um, a quick description, as well as quick breakdown of the academic standards. Uh, ultimately, working into the lesson plan. Um, a lot of details here, very, very useful uh, objectives and outcomes, different background knowledge, um, ultimately getting into a deeper breakdown on these academic standards. Um, again, a huge advantage to have, especially when um, trying to hit some of these new um, computer science standards that, they're, that are coming into schools now, especially at the elementary level. Um, and then you have the sample version or a sample solution of the worksheet. And so for this particular one, we're, we're obviously identifying the, the problem that we're solving, 
um, identifying those criteria and constraints, doing some brainstorming, identifying that you know no ideas are, are too crazy, um, selecting a solution and developing the model, testing that model. If it works, great. If not, then I think that's even better because now students have to go back, they have to reevaluate and then think about the, the problem from a different angle, that type of thing. Um, and then ultimately, you know, we have our, our uh, the last part here where you have to communicate the results of your engineering design. And, and I, I just think this is extremely important because, you know, to, to really effectively articulate where your mindset was, you know, what went right, what went wrong, um, some of the things that you changed and, and really what you were thinking throughout the entire um, process of, of, you know, going through this assignment. Um, whether it's, you know, uh, being written out or whether it's auditorily, uh, it's just such a good skill to be able to effectively articulate that. And so um, definitely something that, that adds into this assignment in particular that, that really takes it to the next level, I think. Um, and then we have the sample solution here for the bots and then um, some one sheets for the students. This one's a little bit longer because we include the video files on there. And then ultimately at the end, uh, we have the uh, worksheet that you'd hand out and have the students turn in. Um, does anybody have any questions on the lessons at all? Are we good? No questions. Let's Perfect. See. I like it. All right. And so the last thing I wanted to show you guys um, before we move on are these extremely useful pacing guides right here. Um, again, our internal educator team has done a really good job of developing these the, the, this resource um, truly is a spectacular resource to have, especially, again, you know, without the headache of developing your own curriculum, um, especially with the, the, the order and, and sort of progress that, that we've included here. Um, definitely, definitely takes a lot of the thinking out of the equation. Um, with this, you know, I always say we, we leave it up to your own creative liberties, um, or you can, you know, take it straight from, straight from the sheets here, straight from this uh, um, review. Um, and so we have about 24 lessons or 24 weeks of lessons here that can uh, be utilized, you know, through through the year as a curriculum. Um, oh, I spoke, misspoke. It's 27 as of now. Uh, looks like it's going to be 30 very, very soon. Um, but again, like I said, this is a really good resource, um, you know, as far as modeling your curriculum off of looking for inspiration, that type of thing. Um, you can click to the lesson through here as well. Um, so they're all here at your disposal, focusing on these primary academic standards on the right. Um, and then a really good breakdown of where the lessons fall uh, at the end here. And so you can kind of scope these out and, and figure out what's gonna work best for you in your classroom. Uh, any questions on the, uh, the pacing guides here? No questions yet. Perfect. All right. Um, well, that was, everything. Um, I know I threw a lot at you, but I know a lot of you guys are pretty familiar with it already. Um, I kind of forgot I was wearing this costume before I just saw my face pop up again. So that was a little bit surprising. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so um, always feel free to reach out to uh, us as well in regards to if you want more information on this type of thing, uh, we can definitely help you out on that front. Great. So um, we'll go ahead. Did you want to talk about the hybrid program, Christian? Ah, good point. Yes, yes. And so um, a big part of, again, that versatility that I was talking about before is, is really being able to allow the students to learn anywhere. And so um, we do have our hybrid program. Um, as, as you guys probably already know, we do sell our robots in two different ways. Uh, so the first way would be in class sets um, in units of 12 or 18. Um, and this would be the second way. And um, this is something that is, is extremely useful for, you know, having multiple students who some might be learning from home, some might be in, in different hybrid programs or, you know, certain quarantine situations that come up, um, you know, or, you know, these are also really great for, for summer programs and maker spaces as well um, for, for kind of splitting up back and forth them being able to do exercises at home and then be able to present and, and come into um, the program the next day and, and display what they worked on. Um, definitely see a lot of that as well. Um, but essentially how the program works, it's, it's the same Ozobot and same Evo that you've all come to know and love. Uh, however, it does come with a really cool uh, case 
that students can can use and, and take home with a, a, a charger as, as well as a pack of markers and, and other activities. Um, with this uh, purchase, you, you do the individuals would be at the minimum of 30. Um, you guys would also get access to not only those, those uh, everything in the lesson library, but also those remote friendly lessons, um, training obviously, as well as uh, professional development with our internal educator team. Um, something that's you know an $800 value you guys would be receiving for free. Um, you're also gonna get those classroom cradles along with uh, the one with each purchase of 30 units. And so essentially you're going to have those classroom kits as well. Um, you know, definitely a, a great investment for, for something that, you know, you'll, you'll be prepared for if, if a little bit of chaos comes, comes through um, and, and something that, you know, has, has definitely been utilized and, and found uh, as a valuable resource all over the, uh, the country through this school year in particular. Thanks so much, Christian. Um, no so worries. I'm going to do a little deeper dive. Um, Christian was really gave you a really wonderful overview of the content that is available to you um, for free in Ozabot Classroom. But something I wanted to focus on was the video lessons um, that have been created, as Christian said, by our internal education team. Um, these lessons are, uh, right now, the, there's a lot of second through eighth grade lessons in our lesson library. Um, our team is actively working on um, getting some kindergarten and first grade lessons in there for the little ones. Um, we do recommend um, pacing these lessons for about one lesson a week, and they are about 45 minutes long. Um, for the older kids, they might go closer to an hour because we know they can handle it. And for the young ones, um, they are closer to 30 minutes because we know that that's um, how long their attention can be kept <laughs> when it comes to learning. Um, all of our lessons are standards aligned to at least one ISTE standard, one CSTA standard, and a content standard, which would be Common Core Math, Common Core ELA, or NGSS. Um, all of the lessons do, they're a complete package. Everything you need to teach the lesson is for free in our lesson library. If you're somebody that's super confident in teaching computer science, we have that synchronous lesson plan for you. You can look over the lesson plan, you can teach it yourself. If you're somebody who may be a little bit more hesitant or you're not really sure how to get started or you don't really know um, best practices for teaching the computer science and robotics, there is a student-facing instructional video that students can watch um, to self-pace and self-guide through a lesson, or we've heard that many teachers actually like displaying it um, as a whole group and having students work together as a whole group. They've also mentioned that when they do use that whole group format, they um, it frees them up. It's like having an extra body in the classroom. They're freed up to be able to monitor and to um, run the classroom to better support students that need help. Um, so we've really, really, focus on taking that heavy lifting off of you. Uh, again, Christian went over that all the student activity sheets and potential solutions are also included. So everything you need to be successful with a lesson is included. Um, and these are just some of the example of the different materials and what they look like. And Christian did go over the pacing guides, which in, um, it was about classroom, we have kindergarten through eighth grade, um, which is comprehensive and will give you about 25 to 30 lessons to start with. Um, we do recommend that everybody starts with the basics. So if you don't have time to go through all of the introduction to color codes and all of the introduction to those about Blockly lessons, we recommend that your students at least start with Get to Know Evo, which covers the hardware and um, the hardware components of the bot and um, the Intro to Color Codes basic training and the introduction to Ozabot Blockly basic training, because those will give your students the basic skills to navigate color codes and Ozabot Blockly. Um, for our video lessons for kindergarten um, through 12th grade, our introduction to color codes is a series of nine lessons. Um, we cover all the different areas of the color code sheet and students learn how to use all the different types of color codes that are available with um, Ozabot. Um, you can also see that for lesson five and lesson nine, there are skills check and these are differentiated by grade level um, based on CSTA and uh, CSTA standards. Um, and these skills checks use, utilize all of the skills that students have learned in the previous lessons and students are asked to apply it to a real world or a real life scenario to test their skills to make sure that they have mastered um, the concepts and skills. Um, in our Oza Blockly 
um, series, we have split it up between second through fifth grade and middle school. So knowing that middle schoolers learn differently than our elementary school friends, um, we have focused on the CSTA standards and following um, the standards that they've out outlined for the different age and the subgroups. So again, this is laid out in a very um, similar format where we start with the basic students learn um, all the basics of the bot and how it works in basic training, then they move on to sequences and loops and all of those um, basic computer science skills. And again, you can see the skills check one in the skills check two, where, where they apply what they've learned in previous lessons to real life scenarios and challenges that we pose for them. Um, in second through fifth grade, they do start to learn about conditionals and variables. And in um, middle school, they do um, get a little bit deeper in the content knowledge and what we ask of them. So there is more content for um, sixth or eighth grade because it's a bit more rigorous in what we are teaching the students at that age. Um, some examples of content integration. So in the pacing guide, you will see that content, there are content integration options for ELA math and STEAM. In this fifth grade math example, students are using the random feature of the bot to create um, place numbers, uh, place value and number forms. So they decide the digits that go at the end of these um, pathways. Those of you that have used Ozobot before know that when Ozobot comes to an intersection, it will randomly make a choice. So this is an engagement um, feature of the bot where students are using it to randomly choose what the digits are. Students place the bot on start six times and they will record each digit every time and then take that um, number. They've written it in standard form and then they will write it in word form and in um, uh, expanded form. And I believe we have an example of what the instruction looks like. So let me share my sound here so that you can hear what the video looks like, sounds like. And we'll get a sneak peek at this. Ozobot is ready to make a six digit number. Are you? We'll place our bot on start. Then we'll watch as it follows the pathway until it gets to a digit. Once it reaches a digit, we will write this digit in the hundreds place under standard form. My bot made it to the number one. In the first place here, I will write one. Then we'll repeat this five times to program Ozobot to move from start to complete my decimal number. My second number is zero. My third number is nine. Since it's truly random, your bot might choose the same number multiple times. How many digits or places will your number have when you are done? So you can see in this video clip, we um, are very, very intentional about instruction. We walk students through each step. This is just one chapter out of that whole video. We actually go through every single part um, and guide them through successfully completing the lesson. Um, so uh, in the slide deck, there are more examples with video clips, um, which you can go back and revisit once they are posted. But I do wanna share some of the other um, content integration options. In second grade, um, in uh, ELA, the students are learning about prefixes. And so what they're doing, again, is using the bot's randomization feature. Um, the students are using the uh, line switch color code here, which means that when the bot travels down one of these arms, it'll travel over the white space and then randomly choose an arm to travel down at the bottom of the page. So for example, if I um, have my bot start and it runs um, past un, and then it comes by and ends at school, I would re record the prefix un, the root word school, and record that it makes unschool then I'd have to determine if it was a real world, re 
if it was a real word, and if not, um, which unschool is not a real word, I would have to choose a different root word to pair the prefix with. So as a student, I might choose unheat or unlucky um, as my uh, options. And then I would run that 10 more times, 10 times total um, to complete the work. Um, again, these video clips are here for you to check out. Um, and these will be posted online for you. Um, some other ELA, or I'm sorry, some other STEAM integrations and uh, social emotional learning integrations we wanted to highlight as well is um, we know the holidays are coming up. So um, one of the examples of a STEAM and SEL integration is our gratitude party, where we have students um, create with um, these with these paper nets, I believe are what, what they're called. Um, they actually cut them out and construct them and color them and then record things that they are um, grateful for and then color code the bot to actually celebrate and um, run some color codes as it travels through their map of what they're grateful for. And again, there's um, an example clip of a video here for you to check out. Uh, and actually I'll show you what the end product looks like here with, after the bot heads to the party. Ozaba is ready to head to the gratitude party. Before you put your bot on start, make sure all your color codes are filled in. I'm going to use black marker to not give away any of the answers, but you will have color codes. Also, don't forget that your bot will want to do a bit of dancing when it gets to the party. So fill in green, then blue so that your bot can do a dance when it gets to the party. Power on and place Ozaba at start. Can you dance with your Ozobot? Um, great, we actually talked about the Learn Anywhere lessons with um, Ozobot Blockly. So what we'd like to highlight as well is, again, we know the holidays are coming up. Um, we are very intentional about making sure students feel represented and that different cultures that we see in the classroom are highlighted in computer science education and that students see themselves in what they're learning. Um, so I do wanna highlight that Halloween is next week and we have a very popular lesson called Trick or Treat where students are um, challenged with going to as many houses as they can to collect candy. And let me actually see if I can pull that up. We, and we could probably um, pop them in the chat, but let me see if I can find trick or treat just so you can see it. Um, but this is a very, very popular um, lesson. If you're looking for something to do with your students for Halloween, um, you can see here, there is a map of a town and their job is to use color codes to go to as many um as many of these houses as possible in 30 seconds to collect candy so that is coming up we also have um our traditional kwanzaa hanukkah and um, christmas lessons and then uh, black history month and lunar new year um, to round it out Christian talked about the pacing guides already, but I just wanted to remind everyone that that is a very, very helpful tool to use. You can see again that this is where we list out um, how we recommend you go through the content with your students. Um, so this is a super helpful tool for you to use, and it's also free in OSPOT Classroom. Um, so again, you can create your free account at classroom.ozabot.com. Um, if you are uh, a Google educator, you can sign in with Google to make things easier. And um, our video lessons, we've made it super easy for you um, to send to your students. If you're not gonna do this whole group um, and you want students to do this individually, you can open the lesson um, to the lesson details page. And then there's this button that says share with students. When you click on that, you actually get a link to copy. And this is something that you can share in your students LMS um, or email out, whatever you prefer, but that link will take students straight to this 
uh, student view page where they can see the video, they can see the materials and resources and all the instructions, completion checklist and give any feedback. So that's a really great way um, for you to share that content with your students um, in a really easy way. Um, we also wanna highlight that we do, we do value and um, prioritize accessibility for our students and our users of our product. Um, we want, wanted to highlight that um, the chapter videos are intentionally, um, they're chaptered in a way and in bite-sized pieces so students can guide their own learning and they can um, go at the speed that makes sense for them. If they need to go back and rewatch something or spend a little bit more time to be more thorough, that is available to them. Um, there's auditory and visual guidance for any students that need that extra, extra support, and there's text instructions. Um, we are really intentional about addressing the tech gap, and we wanted to make sure that students have access to computer science education um, through content integration. If, if teachers um, out there, we know you don't have any extra time and you're being asked to teach computer science, um, so one way to easily do that is to integrate it with content that you're already teaching. Um, Ozobot is for any grade level and any skill level. It truly is usable by anyone. And we also provide supports for students with um, color vision deficiency. So with that, we can jump into Q&A. Um, I don't see any questions listed, but Crystal, do you know if any were listed in the chats that we can answer? And for those of you in the audience, if you'd like to ask your questions in the chat or Q&A, now would be the perfect time. I haven't seen anything in the chat. All right, great. So then we'll actually move on to wrap up. But if you do have any questions, feel free to contribute um, in the chat and we'll make sure to answer them. But if you need bots, um, you can request a demo or quote at ozobot.com. We also have free Ozobot Blockly challenges. Um, if you go to the Ozobot website and click on create, and challenges. Um, there's a simulator there, and then we have Shape Tracer 1, Shape Tracer 2, and uh, Ozotown that you can use, um, which don't require any bots. So your students can use those bot free. Um, you can also access our grant funding tool at the, um, the website listed there, and um, you can get started at Ozobot um, Classroom where we have training and you can explore lessons. So if there are no any questions, we can wrap up for the day. Thank you, Prince. I am so sorry I identified you as a pirate. I um, my, my deepest apologies there. <laughs> um, but we hope that everybody has a safe and uh, wonderful fall. Um, stay healthy, stay safe. We hope things are going smoothly with you and your students. And thank you all for attending today. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. Have a good day, everyone.